So if you've been to the Roblox dev wiki recently, specifically on the mouse page, you probably would have seen this message. I mean, it basically says the mouse has been superseded by user input service. And for someone who's been using the mouse, the mouse for a really long time, I was kind of distressed when I saw this because it's basically saying this is deprecated, but it's not because everyone uses it. And using deprecated things or basically deprecated things is just not really that good. And you can tell the age of this module because it offers stuff like target surface or you can't even tell the normal. So it's only like top bottom. You can't get like an actual vector and you need something more. So I did some research when a user input service, you, ha you have to actually like get the camera as well as use user input service, but I'll get into that a little bit later. And I created my very own mouse module and here it is. So it's a pretty big module. There are a few really, really important functions. The rest are just for convenience, but it's used to overwrite what the default mouse is used for. And I have it in replicated storage so everyone can get it. So if you want to use this module, link will be in the description. And if you want to see how it works, make sure to watch this video. So let's get started. I already have my mouse module brought in from the toolbox. I'll have the link in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. So first thing, let's go to a demonstration. I'll explain the API a little bit later. It's, it'll just be easier to start with a demonstration. So I'm going to go into starter player scripts and create a local script. And obviously, since this is a mouse module, you cannot get this module on the server. There's no checks for that, but it won't really do much since you can't really access the camera on the server or user input service. So I'm just going to get replicated storage, and I'm going to get my mouse module, which will be in replicated storage. There we go. So here we are our mouse module. I'm going to do a very basic example that just shows you how it works. So I'm going to have an infinite loop, and we're going to wait a second. And we're just going to do mouse module. We're going to print. Actually, we're going to make a variable. Local target equals mouse module dot get target. And then we're going to print our target. So this function looks to see where the mouse is pointing at and gets the target of the mouse. So you can see right now it's the base plate. If I hover over my hand, it's like my arm. We have head. And some other stuff. Yeah, so this is my body. You can just see it tells you where it is. And likewise, we can also say mouse get position to get the position. And this is also pretty useful. And you can see that this mouse very similarly copies the basic API of the original mouse and Roblox. And the reason I'm making this is because if you actually go to the wiki page, I have it over here, it says this object has been superseded by user input service. And basically this is saying that the only reason they keep it is because a lot of people use it. Really, it should be deprecated, but everyone uses it. So... This very similarly copies it. We have get position, which is similar to mouse.hit. It's not C frame, but you can very easily calculate C frame. And you have get target. But these are basically just convenience functions. The real power is really in the raycast function. So this function raycasts, and we get a raycast result. And this is the same raycast result that I've always been using on this channel or well i mean recently they updated it but whatever so i have a video on this on the new like ray functions and it gives me a raycast result and then we can do stuff with it. so first of all since when you're pointing at the sky you wouldn't ever get a result you have to check if the result is there to make it easier we'll say result and we'll say result and in here we can just say like print result.instance. And you can basically see this does the exact same thing as our other thing, except we have a little more control. 
And you can go a step further than this. And this is the same functionality as the old one, but it just makes it a little bit easier. You can do get unit ray. And this is probably the most important function in this module. And the reason is, is because realistically in a game, when you're, when you're getting the position of the mouse, unless you're positioning a GUI or something, you would want the physics or like a bullet, for example, like you're shooting a bullet, you want to aim and then you want to shoot your gun. The bullet would be created and fired on the server. So the best practice for this module is really just to say mouse module get unit ray and then you send this unit ray to the server and the server does the ray casting for you. So let me show you a quick example of that. Now, you could do this very simply. Let me just show you the get unit ray function. Because it's very small. But the real charm of this module is the fact that you can debug very easily. And I'll elaborate on that a little bit later. But let's just do this real quick. So we have our ray. And then we can, let's say, make a remote event. And we can just say mouse position get send mouse position there we go and then we can get that send mouse position equals replicate storage wait for child send mouse position there we go and then we can do send mouse position fire server with our ray and then on the server we can say local send mouse position. I really should be defining replicate storage, but that's fine. Will be equal to game get service replicate storage dot send mouse position. There we go. We can do send mouse position on server event connect a function, and we'll get the player and the unit ray. And then here we can just say local result equals workspace raycast unit ray dot origin unit ray dot direction times like 500. So the reason we have to get the unit ray origin unit ray direction is because legacy in the past you do workspace like find part on ray and you send in your unit ray, but since we're using the new raycast functions, you have to get the origin and the direction specifically. And here is a result. We can just say if result, then print result dot instance. So this is a lot more code, but is accomplishing the same thing. And you're maybe asking, why would you want to do this? And that's just because. On the client, anything could happen. You could be lagging really hard, and instead of you, your like mouse like pointing at the base plate, for example, it could just be like pointing at another player, like through like three walls or something, and that just would not be good. Obviously, there's a lot more complexity in regards to latency and shooters and shooting in general. I'm just kind of doing a brief overview of that, but that's just a little bit of the basics. And also, since this mouse module uses the new raycasting, it's not really new, but the raycasting system that we have now that's not legacy, you can also send in optional raycast parameters for your students. So like, if I want to say mouse raycast, I can send in parameters to prevent it from detecting the player. But then again, you could do the same exact thing on the server. So let's look, take a quick look at the API. So basically, get unit ray is all you want to do. Honestly, if you're not too worried about debugging and you're not too worried about just some like conveniences, I would honestly use git like just take this out and just use this as like a local function or something. It's just that useful. And here are the rest of the functions. You have raycast, which gets the unit ray, and then we do workspace raycast, just like what we did here. Notice the Luau type syntax again. And people are asking me if I should do a tutorial on it. And it's not to a point where it's, like, useful and it's not complete either. So I'm going to hold off on that until they make it a lot better. But you also have the get position function, which gets the raycast result. And we forward the unit ray. And then we 
get the position. If they didn't recast on anything, we just give them like their default position where it would be. And get targets the same. And you have this private function that just connects a few little events that I created up here. Let me actually demonstrate those. So let's get rid of this while true. We can just say mouse module dot left click connect function and we can just print and we'll get our state so print mouse module dot get unit ray so whenever you click it will print your unit ray and that works fine so you may be asking this is a module. How is he connecting it directly to an index of the module? And the thing I'm using is I'm using a bindable event, and then we're using the event of that bindable event to put here. So this is good in two ways. First of all, it makes it a lot easier syntactically and a lot similar to normal Roblox objects, and it prevents any other requirer of this module from firing our left and right click actions and these are kind of just for debugging and for convenience realistically you'd want to use user input service or context action service to detect input but i mean a lot of this stuff is for convenience you know whenever i'm working on a small project i just pop this module in and then i use some of the functions just to make something simple make a little prototype but this get unit array function can be very useful and you can also learn from some of this code for like a basic raycasting workflow. So that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. This is just a no another module. I think for these next few days, I'm gonna start polishing and making a few of my modules like publishable because you guys really like the last one. And I feel like this is pretty useful because even if you don't use these modules, you can just look at the code and learn from someone who's made like i didn't make these modules because i thought i would need to use them i made a bunch of games and then i realized i should probably make some modules for this stuff i'm doing over and over and over again so this is just the result of trial and error and me just eventually making these so eventually in your dev career you'll probably get to a situation where you need to do something like this and here's my quick example i encourage you to write your own though because that's always a fun challenge and experience but other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did. Tell me what module or what tutorial you want to see next in the comments. And I hope you have a nice day and goodbye.